Okay, so good morning everyone. Today we're going to continue our discussion for week number one, general biology. So first, uh, let's recall our topic. Last time we discussed the cell theory. So we uh, also discussed the different scientists who contributed for us to have the three postulates of cell. So first, all organisms are made up of one or more cells. Second postulate, all cells came from pre-existing -exist cell. And the third is cell is the basic unit of life. Okay, so now we will deal with cell structures and function. We have two types of cell, namely eukaryotic and prokaryotic. They have a large differences between these two types of cell. For example, prokaryotics are considered to have a unicellular because most of those organisms consist of only one cell, while the eukaryotic, uh, they are multicellular organism or they create a, a multicellular organism. Some examples of prokaryotic cells are Vibrio cholera, some bacteria, okay? They are single cell organism. On the other hand, we have eukaryotic. So eukaryotic cells are platelets, neuron, animal cells, and plant cells. So here is a Venn diagram that shows the difference between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells, as well as their similarities. Okay? In general, prokaryotic cells are small and simple. Actually, prokaryotic cells are the first living organism that exist here on Earth. They are much smaller than eukaryotic cells about 0.1 to 5.0 micrometer in size, and they are unicellular. They have or they doesn't have nucleus membrane bound organelle, okay? Uh, there is only a unit or a region wherein their circular DNA are present, and that is what we call nucleoid. Their DNA are single haploid, chromosomes. Also, they lack in membrane-bound organelle. At the same time, they can both reproduce through sexual and asexual reproduction. Most of the prokaryotic cells use a cell division by binary fission. So they'll just duplicate their DNA or, uh, for them to create two daughter cells. So some examples of that, prokaryotic cells are bacteria and archaea cells. So we have here eukaryotic cells, okay? So eukaryotic cells, they are larger and more complex. So why complex? Because they adapt, they evolve from a simple or singular unit cell. Their size are 10 to 100 micrometer in size. They are can either be unicellular or multicellular, but most of the time, eukaryotic cells creates mostly multicellular organism, and they have nucleus. So nucleus uh, is an organelle that protects the DNA, and eukaryotic cell consists of a linear DNA. They have a paired diploid or 2N chromosomes, that is the X, X or XY chromosomes, and they have or they has a membrane-bound organelle. Most of the eukaryotic cells can reproduce sexually, and they divide or they perform a mitosis and meiosis cell division. The examples for eukaryotic cells are animal cells, also plant cells, okay? The, and it includes human. So what is the similarities between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic? Even though they have a large uh, difference in, in size, 
in numbers of DNA and also in their reproduction. So both prokaryotic and eukaryotic have a cell membrane or plasma membrane that protects the cell from its outer environment. And they have both cytoplasm. Also, they, they have a ribosomes, which is responsible for creating protein. And lastly, they both have DNA as one characteristic of a living organism that must have or must contain a DNA. So animal and plant cell are two types of eukaryotic cell. Animal cells are the one that creates human, mammals, reptiles. While on the other hand, plant cells are the one that creates different species of plants. So what is the difference between the two? Animal cells are, are smaller compared to plant cell. So animal cells are 10 to 30 micrometers in length. And plant cells is 10 to 100 micrometers in length. Plant cell are typically rectangular or cubic in shape because they have a cell wall. So this cell wall is an organelle of plant cell that makes it rigid and protects as well as give shape to the plant cell. So we have an animal cell on the, uh, on the other side. They are typically round or irregular because the only organelle that protects them or that separates the organelles within the cell is the plasma membrane. Okay, so this is a image from electron micrograph of animal cells and plant cells. So as you can see, the most dominant part of an animal cell is nucleus. Nucleus is the densest part of our animal cells. And the, here is the plant cells. So this is the nucleus of a plant cell and the largest organelle that can be found on a plant cell is a water vacuole. This color blue part con uh, is a vacuole that contain, ayan, that contain water for storage of water ng plant cells. Okay, so this is another image that shows us organelles of a plant cell. We can clearly see the mitochondria. Okay. Also, we have here some lysosomes, Golgi apparatus, the centrioles, okay, the plasma membrane, and then the nucleus. Okay. The, the nucleus of the animal cell and plant cells appear to be darker compared to other organelles is because they contain a strand of chromosomes or chromatins. That's why it's more dense compared to other organelles. So another image of animal uh, plant cell. <clears throat> so this is the chloroplast. Okay, the green color. Yeah, so this is a chloroplast. As we can see, this chloroplast already created a food product, which is a glucose or starch grain for the production of food ng plant cell natin. They process, or this is the site of photosynthesis. Okay, so try this. You may pause the video and then try to answer or to identify the different parts of a cell. So from 1 to 14. So let's proceed to the discussion of organelles and functions of a cell. First organelle is cell membrane. Okay. So cell membrane is being described as the gatekeeper because it controls what, what comes into and out of the cell. 
So the cell membrane are present in both plant and animal cell. The cell membrane is composed of a phospholipid bilayer. Both of the phospholipid bilayer of our cell membrane have a hydrophobic and hydrophilic characteristic or water loving and water heating characteristic that's why they can uh, choose or they can control what may what product what waste must come out and in of the cells okay so ang tawag po natin dito sa image na to is a fluid mosaic that shows a phospholipid bilayer embedded with different uh, different proteins okay this protein are organelles or part of the cell membrane that helps to transport materials or waste product in and out of the cells okay so we have different types of protein we have cell membrane receptor protein, integral membrane protein, peripheral membrane protein, as well as some um, globular protein, glyco glycoprotein, and as you can see, we have here some carbohydrate, sugar, chain, and cholesterol. All of those uh, protein, carbohydrates, and cholesterol that was embedded within the phospholipid bilayer of our cell membrane have a functions. Next is the cell wall. Okay, so cell wall is a rigid outer layer of a plant cell that gives cells a strength and structure. At the same time, it also filters molecule that passes in and out of the cell. So this organelle is only present in plant cell. Okay, it cannot be found in animal cell. So this is an image that shows cell wall. Okay, they give a definite shape for our plant cell. Next is the cytoplasm. Okay, cytoplasm are gel-like fluid inside our cell where the organelles are found so the function for the function of cytoplasm is to keep the stability within the cell so the cytoplasm spend or all of the organelles within the cell animal or plant cell okay so we have or our cell consists of, of a cytoplasm because our organelle must stay put in place especially the rough er smooth er and golgi body for an efficient function of their organelles so they must stay in put okay this is an image that shows the cytoplasm and on the other hand we have a electron microscopic view of cytoplasm next is the mitochondria Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So what do we mean by powerhouse? It produces energy for all cell. So here, uh, mitochondria is known as the site for the energy production, which is ATP or the adenosine triphosphate. ATP is the energy, energy currency for all cells. So it can be found in plants and animal cell so mitochondria produce produces atp for the cell to grow reproduce and to <clears throat> perform metabolic processes okay so this is an image of a mitochondria with some structural features like inner membrane outer membrane, cristae, and then the matrix. So those are the parts of the mitochondria. Within this part, the, the mitochondria can break down glucose, perform Krebs cycle, and then 
process electron transport chain and chemiosmosis to create 36 ATP. And on the other side, this is an electron micrograph view of mitochondria. So we can see, clearly see the cristae or the foldings within the mitochondria. Next organelle is lysosomes. Okay, Lysosomes uses chemical or digestive enzyme to break down food and worn out cell part. So the function of lysosomes is for to recycle food molecules and other organelles. Let's say there are my, there are organelles like mitochondria, um, vacuoles that has been worn out. So what will happen? The lysosomes will engulf the food molecules and worn out organelles, and then they will break it down using a digestive enzyme and convert the product or convert it into a micromolecules. So once they produces a micromolecules, the cell can also again reuse those molecules. Okay, so it is also break down some organelles that do not function well. So our lysosomes is only a single wall, single wall membrane that consists of a digestive enzymes. Okay, so this is an example of lysosomes. Next is the vacuole, okay? So vacuole, it acts like a storage room, storage for food, water, waste, and other materials, okay? So both plants and animal consist of a, or both, plants and animals have a vacuole. But in plant cell, they have a larger vacuole for the storage of water compared to animal cells. So there is a larger storage in plant cell because plants manufacture their own food through the process of photosynthesis. So Animal cell doesn't need large vacuole because we have a uh, cellular respiration and the mitochondria is responsible for converting uh, glucose that we've eaten uh, that we've eaten and then we can have our own energy currency which is ATP. Unlike plants, they must utilize sunlight, water, uh, carbon dioxide for them to make their own food okay so this is an image that shows a vacuum within a plant cell okay on the other hand is the vacuum in animal cells next is the nucleus okay nucleus controls and regulate the activities of cell. So this is the control center of the cell. It is responsible for monitoring the growth, metabolism, and all of the cellular uh, activity. At the same time, the nucleus carries the genes, structures that contain the heredity, of information. Nucleus is the densest part of the cell. Okay, so this is an image that shows the nucleus. Okay, so this is the nucleus. And this image shows uh, nucleus with chromosomes and then uh, this is the nucleus with chromosomes ito naman yung nucleus with chromatids okay so the densest part is where the dna was located okay so ito yan yung densest part next part or next organelle of cell is the nucleolus okay 
nucleolus can be found inside the nucleus. Okay? This nucleolus produces ribosomes. Okay? So, that's why our nucleolus is uh, surrounded by ribosomes. Okay? So, that is the function of the nucleolus. Okay? So, this is an image that shows nucleolus and this one is an image from electron microscope again that shows nucleolus next organelle is the chromatin okay chromatin is a tiny strand inside the nucleus that contain instructions for directing the cell function so chromatins are the one or the one that consists of the DNA strand. Okay, so this is the chromatin fiber. Okay, the chromatin fiber, they will become chromosomes once the cell is ready for cell division. Once the cell is mature enough to perform mitosis and meiosis, the chromatins within the cell will be formed into uh sister chromatids the xx and xy chromosomes okay the chromatins is made up of series of tiny strands of our dna that was coiled within a protein called histone this is the difference between chromatins and chromosomes as you can see chromatins are tiny fiber within the nucleus and chromosomes are being formed by the are formed from the chromatin once the cell is ready for cell division so they will undergo a g phase so prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase so that is the chromatin Next organelle is the ribosomes, okay? So ribosomes, they are responsible for assembling amino acid to create protein. So ribosome is the site for protein synthesis. Ribosomes can be found or can, can be found within the endoplasmic reticulum or embedded in a ER. That's why we have two types of ER, the rough ER and smooth ER. Smooth, uh, rough ER consists of a ribosomes. So this is an image of ribosomes synthesizing protein. From amino acid, they create a protein. So protein can be produced through our, uh, within our cell and then this protein have specific functions okay they can regulate our hormones they can uh, use for our immune system okay next chloroplast okay chloroplast captures energy from the sunlight and it uses for the for it to produce food in plant cells so therefore, chloroplast can only be found in plant cell. Okay, animal cell doesn't have chloroplast because animal cell doesn't need to produce their own food. Okay, chloroplast is the site for the photosynthesis. So here are the different parts of our chloroplast: outer membrane, the stroma, inner membrane thylakoid and granum okay within the chloroplast we have a chlorophyll okay chlorophyll are responsible for giving the plant a green pigment some plant doesn't have a green pigment so they create uh, they have other type of pigments such as xanthophyll uh, xanthophyll or pigment that produce a uh, pigment that gives plant a orange red violet red to violet color next organelle is er 
or endoplasmic reticulum. So what is the purpose of ER? They are the passageway that carries protein and, mater and other materials from one part of the cell to another. So we have two types of endoplasmic reticulum, namely rough ER and smooth ER. So what is the difference between the two? Rough ER consists of a ribosomes. Smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes. The rough ER is responsible for transporting proteins to Golgi body. So why protein? Because it, it was embedded by ribosomes. And we discussed that ribosomes is responsible for synthesizing the protein. Okay? So we have here the smooth ER. So smooth ER are the one that transports the lipids. So all of their products will go to the Golgi body. Okay? So this is an image that shows rough ER and smooth ER. Okay, and uh, we have here another image uh, from electron micros, uh, micrograph, the rough ER. They appear more dense compared to smooth ER because they have uh, ribosomes. Okay. Next organelle is Golgi body. Okay. Golgi body is the one that receives the material from smooth and rough ER. So they are the one that receives protein and lipids as well as the other material from the endoplasmic reticulum because Golgi body are the one that packs and distribute materials, distribute materials all over or from different parts ng ating cell. So this is a Golgi apparatus. Okay? So Golgi apparatus, same with mitochondria, they consist of a cristae or foldings and they created or they have a vacuoles or vesicles. So these vesicles uh, contain incoming uh, incoming transport vesicle contain materials such as protein and lipids while the newly formed vesicles are the one that has been tapped and will be distributed to different parts or different organelles of the cells okay so in addition we also have yeah we also have centrioles okay Centrioles is a organelle that can be found in plant and animal cells because centrioles is responsible for the cell division for uh, cell division of a cell because centriole is the one that will be formed to be a spindle fiber so once the nucleus or the chromatins within the nucleus are formed into chromosomes, sila yung hihila from one pole to another para mag-divide and they will create two daughter cells. Okay? So centriole is, is responsible for the uh, reproduction of the plant and animal cells. So it can be found in the mitosis and meiosis during or it can be found during mitosis and meiosis animal and plant cell consists only two centrioles uh, for each cells kasi dalawa lang naman ang kailangan okay so that's it for the different organelles and organelles and parts and function ng ating cells. Okay, if you have any questions, you can chat it on our GC. And that's it. Thank you and goodbye.